We're going to ask what the pros and cons of an artist independently managing or promoting themselves as a band. Starting with you, Michael. Pros and cons. Of, of managing yourself? Independently managing. Yeah, right. Uh, this is kind of relevant to me because we have had two managers in the past and um, fired both of them and ended up uh, managing ourselves. <laughs> and um, I guess it's, it's kind of down to how much control you want to have over what you're doing. And there's no one else to blame if you're doing it all yourself, if you know what I mean. Um, pros and cons. There are cons. I mean, if you're if, if you're the one managing your band, then it's kind of um, it's kind of hard to be purely creative. You know what I mean? I, you might trade off a little bit of your creativity um, because you start getting stressed out with. You know, whatever it is, you have to manage. it depends on what level you're managing it at. Though, I mean, what were the reasons you fired the managers? The first one, um, oh my god, he, he wasn't our kind of guy. <laughs> um, no, our first one was um, Bjork's old marketing manager, and we our, we signed with Flying Nun Records and we didn't really know what we were doing. We just thought, oh, this is what bands do. You get a record deal and then everything's fine. And then um, they said, oh, we've got a manager for you. And we were like, oh, cool. So we had a look at the contract, got a lawyer. He said it was pretty good. And so we just signed with him. And um, he's, he's, he did it, at, you know what, he did a pretty good job. Um, but it wasn't what we wanted to do at the time, if you know what I mean. So, so we, um, and around that time we met a guy called John Baker who was um, tour managing the White Stripes and he put us on and we um, supported them. Um, and he convinced us to drop our other manager and we really wanted to get rid of him. We wanted John to be our manager, so we got him instead. And he was great, but then he wanted to be a really big creative part of the band and and so then you had this other ego in there sort of thing and so he did a good job but um you already had quite a few egos in that band though yeah there's a lot of egos <laughs> there <laughs> so uh, you know like um and we, we always kept it pretty much our own thing anyway so if john was saying do this then we'd be like nah, nah, you know but he did he did do some some pretty bold stuff that was we thought was pretty cool at the time like um the label wouldn't release our second EP because it was too weird and so he told us to um, go on strike pretty much which we wouldn't have done if we hadn't have had this manager because he was he's kind of a ballsy guy we figured we want the kind of manager who hangs people upside down off the top of buildings to get our money <laughs> so, so we um did that work going on strike uh it, it did actually it was very good we um and we wouldn't have done this, we would have just been like, oh, okay, we'll change it then, yeah. and be all upset about it. But instead, um, yeah, we went on strike, and we made our own seven inch, and um, and uh, it came out in the shops, and then the record label freaked out and said, this is a breach of contract, and blah, blah, blah. And I was yeah. like, well, you know. Do you guys know what a seven inch is? Yeah. yeah. You know, like a record. Yeah, it's a record, it goes around. Yeah. yeah, and and um, and yeah, and so then they're like, okay, we'll release it, you know, and then that was it. Yeah. yeah. So, so then, sorry. sorry. Um, what do you make a good, a good manager? So yeah, someone who hangs people upside down, <laughs> gets you paid. Yeah, yeah. Just someone, that, someone who um, is uh, yeah, just takes care of business. If you know what I mean, like um. So, so that you don't have to think about that stuff and they take care of you and then because they're getting a cut from your sort of thing, right? So you want them to make their cut, if you know what I mean, their 20% cut or whatever it would be. So yeah, someone who gets you money or gets the company money, which is the band. I don't, yeah. Well, actually, I, I actually disagree with that. I think someone who is a is kind of, is kind of, in a way, a good thing. Because um, we, we, it's our job to be kind of not, but when it's time to 
get us paid. We want someone who's, you know, like, if they have to be, if they have to be a about it, they'll be a about it, you know what I mean? But us, we can just go, oh, look, hey, whatever, you know. Yeah, I mean, you know, like, in New Zealand, it's actually kind of a, a tricky one, though, because Kiwis don't like people to be like that, you know what I mean? But in the States, on the other hand, you kind of need someone to be a bit more ballsy, you know what I mean? But, so I don't know, it's a little trade-off, really. You ever watched Entourage? You know, Ari? He's the perfect manager. <laughs> Get a guy like Ari from Entourage. We? Savini, you're promoting some pretty big shows. Um, do you look at artists who are independently managed to play support? Um, I think to start off with, I was just getting mates bands and stuff like that to play and it was just a lot easier because you could just talk to them and... How did you hear about them? They knew. Oh, just because they were hanging around. I was just always around musicians, could never get rid of them. <laughs> we just grew up all the time as musicians all around me and that was a good thing because I could always find bands to play and sort of just grew from there, I guess. And, um, what, and I guess the way of sort of developing my All Ages shows um, just with my job in music publishing, got to meet a lot of bands and stuff like that, and you kind of get to know them and, and, and stuff like that. And it's, it's actually quite easy to try and get a band to play at your show, so that sort of works. Um, I guess the good thing about talking to a band directly is that um, you can just be a bit more sort of straightforward and kind of just say, look, here's a show, here's who's playing, this is where it is. Um, are you keen? And it'll be like, yeah, cool, we'll do it. But usually a manager would go, oh, okay, um, how much are we going to get paid? Or what are you doing in terms of, you know, they'll ask you all of this stuff. And even though you're doing all of that stuff, you sort of feel like uh, perhaps you're not, perhaps they think that you're not sort of doing your job. Um, so I think that's sort of a difference. But I mean, most managers that I've dealt with are really, really good. Um, and I guess if I know a band's managed by certain uh, a certain personality, uh, I might not actually even choose that band because I don't <laughs> want to deal with that certain manager. And it does, I think, I think what Mike broke up, um, had a good point actually about the whole kind of thing. It's like, I think a manager does need to stand up for their band, but I think there's sort of a way to go on about it. But it definitely it's different in New Zealand to overseas, even Australia. But usually, you know, sort of usually speaking, I'd say that the most managers and tour managers that I've dealt with, the ones that are just the most intense, they seem to be the ones managing all the big, you know, bands that are doing really well. 